So I'll start by showing you how to prepare the pan. What I have here is a nine inch square baking pan and I've greased the inside of it. I haven't put any flour in there because what I want to do is by greasing the inside of that, I want my grease proof paper to stick onto it. So I've cut this grease proof paper and I've cut it quite long. So you can see that it's really considerably larger than the pan, okay? And the reason that I've done that is because these sides are going to act as handles when I pull the brownies out after they've actually cooked. And here's a little tip for you as well when using grease proof paper. Scrunch it up like that. What I'm doing by doing that is I'm breaking down the wax in it and it makes it much easier to use. So now I'm just going to push this in. So I'm going to leave that to the side now. And what I have here is 70% dark chocolate. I have 340 grams of that, and I also have 85 grams of butter in here as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it over here onto, and this, by the way, this, uh, this bowl is 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And I need a bowl that's going to be big enough to take the whole batter in this, because I'm going to put everything into this once this is melted. So I have here uh, a little simmering pot of uh, water, um, not very much in there. It's the steam that's going to do the work on here. So I'm going to put it, on there and the one thing that I want to make sure is that no matter what I don't have the bottom hitting the water because that would cook the chocolate and burn it very quickly. So that's going to sit there now and it'll take about eight nine minutes. I'll turn the heat up and it ever so slightly and that'll start to melt the butter and the chocolate and I'll only occasionally stir it. So that's that part now. So here is my chocolate and my butter and it has melted beautifully for me. That only took about seven or eight minutes. And I turned the heat off after about six minutes just because uh, you know, the heat was already in it. So it's gonna naturally melt the rest of the chocolate very gently. So I'm gonna take this off here now and do be careful when lifting it off the pan. Steam can give you a really nasty burn. So make sure your hand is covered when you do this. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna bring it over here now. And I'm going to add in a combination of granulated sugar and a light brown sugar as well. I have a total of 180 grams in here. So I am going to give it a little stir, put that in. And the heat will break down any lumps of sugar that might be in there, so don't worry about that. The other thing that I'm going to do now as well is I'm just going to leave this for a little while because I don't want it to be too hot because the next thing that's gonna go in here is my eggs. And I'm gonna to continue to stir this a little bit, just again, to let the sugar start to dissolve and become a whole part, amalgamate with the chocolate and the butter as well. What I'm also going to do, just I'm gonna show you now while that's cooling down a little bit. This recipe originally called for chocolate chips, but they can be kind of hard to get in these days. So they, these strange days that we're all in. So what I'm going to do, I've taken just a bar of chocolate and I've just left half a bar of chocolate here to show you the best and easiest way to cut this up. So I'm, I'm gonna cut it across on the diagonal, okay? So I'm just gonna chop it there. Make sure it's just at room temperature and it'll chop pretty easily. And then I'm just going to chop it so that it, on the other diagonal, and as you can see there, it's making me little chips, little square chips. So this chocolate is going to both go into, into the mix. Um, so I have my chocolate and sugar mix here. Another little whirl as well, just keep, let it start cooling down. Just gonna test that, no, it's not too bad. Delicious. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to beat my eggs ever so slightly. I've got four eggs in here. And I'm gonna put a little splash of vanilla essence in it. There we go. It's about a tablespoon of that. Now, here comes the slightly scary part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gradually add the eggs into this mixture. And when it does that, it seizes up ever so slightly. So this is one of those ones that's really important to actually see so that you don't panic when you're doing it. So 
Here are my eggs, and I'm going to pour about a quarter of them in. That's probably a little bit more than a quarter. And I'm going to start beating them in, okay? So here we go. And you can see that's starting to, what I would call, seize up, okay? So you can see that it's kind of gone a bit grainy, and the butter is separating a little bit there as well. Don't panic, this is okay. It just needs a good amount of elbow grease. Nice little workout to get this back to where you want to get it. But this is natural. The eggs are cooling it down. So it's just the chemical combination of the butter and the eggs going in. And there's the last bit of my eggs. So really a third, a third, a third is a great way to do it. And again, just getting my eggs through starting in the middle so that you draw the eggs into the middle and what you can see there is it's starting to change and that's going to be beautiful and glossy now. now there you go see how beautiful and glossy that is so over here i have 150 grams of flour and i've got 30 grams of cocoa powder. Really importantly, use cocoa powder, not drinking chocolate. Drinking chocolate has sugar in it, and it doesn't have the same concentration of chocolate in it, okay? So the cocoa powder. So I'm going to put half of this in now. And I'm going to, and it's self-raising, it's just regular flour, it's not self-raising flour. So I'm going to gradually draw this in. I'm not gonna overwork this. You don't want your brownies to be tough. If you overwork flour, it all becomes very rubbery and tough. The gluten starts to, to work up. That's why people need bread, is because you want the gluten to create that real texture, that consistency that you want with bread, but you don't want it with pastry. Now, this is my stout. So I'm going to gradually add this in. Drawing in again around the outside, not overworking it too much, kind of letting the whisk do everything that you need it to. And I've let the Guinness actually sit out um, for several hours so that the real fizziness comes off it, otherwise these rise up too much. Now, there we go. So if you can see that's quite a runny batter and I'm going to put the last of my flour in there as well. Just working from the inside towards the outside. This is a really easy recipe and what I love about this recipe is that you don't have to be beating eggs and sugar etc. Everything happens in this bowl. This is more or less in real time and what you can see the only thing that took a little bit of time was for me to do the chocolate and the butter and to melt that. Other than that it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to add in about a third of my milk chocolate there, just to give it that extra richness and gooiness. There we go. And now I'm just going to pour straight into the baking tin. chips, whichever you have, over the top. And that is going to go into my oven, which I preheated to 150. And it's going to go in there, that's a fan oven. I'm going to put it about between 150 and 160, and I'm going to set my timer for 18 minutes. It's really, really important that the 18 minutes that you go and check it afterwards, because you want these brownies to be slightly undercooked. So better to check them early and put on your timer again for another two or three minutes. So I am checking out my brownies. I'm going to give them a little shake there. You can see there's a little, don't know if you can see that, but there's a little wobble still, but they will continue to cook. And I'm just going to stick a skewer in and see what they're like as well. Yeah, it's still a bit gooey, but you know what? I'm going to take them out because they will continue to cook and you want them to have that gooeyness. And as you can see, what's important is to bring these down to room temperature before you do anything with them. So leave them in the pan 
Um, it'll take about two hours for them to really cool down. Put them on a wire rack so that the air gets underneath them. That's really important so that it doesn't continue, the heat doesn't build up on the counter there. And as you can see, here are some I uh, made earlier. And these are really, really delicious if you eat them with a lot of whipped cream. Um, really yummy. You can warm them up a little bit as well. They'll keep for days in an airtight container. So there you have it, my chocolate and Guinness brownies.